Thank you, Annette. That was beautiful. And hello and welcome to our online service of the Humboldt Unitarian Universalist Fellowship we call Huff. My name is Scarlett Tripsmith and I will be your technical liaison for today. If this is your first time joining us, we are so pleased that you have found us. And please feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat to everyone. As you can see, you are all muted. 
However, there will be some fun breaking into activities later in breakout rooms where we will be able to converse with our fellow congregants, so that should be fun. And we please ask that if you feel comfortable, please bless us with your gorgeous faces by keeping your video on. Now, in our UU tradition, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge what our community is going through on an individual level. And so we'd say that please send your joy, sorrows, and celebrations to Amy Day, for she will be holding space for us in this time today. Um, I just want to say um, that I am very deeply grateful for this community, especially this last week. I've been under the weather, and the care, the care circle has just really pulled through for me and just really been there for me and my partner, and I just... You all have been such a family to me during this time, and it's so hard to accept kindness, and I just really am so grateful to all of you, and thank you for being here today. And along with that, I want to acknowledge just, you know, that during this time when we cannot meet safely together, these online services are our way of connecting and continuing to keep the mission of our congregation and association alive in our own lives and to engage in this work. So we're glad that you're here and we ask you to join us in embracing diversity, empowering connection, and engaging in the work. We acknowledge that the land on which we live is a traditional home of the Wiat people, and we remind ourselves that indigenous people are a part of our communities and, we and that they continue to experience the effects of colonization and conquest even today. We are committed to fighting for the worth and dignity of indigenous people in our community and around the world. We commit ourselves to work for a world in which lives, bodies, work, dreams, and leadership of black people are honored and respected. We want to remind ourselves that we must put our words and our principles into action every day for justice in the common good. We welcome and thank you again for being here with us today. And without further ado, I would love to introduce, <sighs> who is it today? Pat McCutcheon with our chalice lighting and aspiration. Thank you so much. We are so glad you're here. It's a beautiful fall morning and it's a season of gratitude. It's National Native American Month and we're together again. May the ringing of the bell bring us together into sacred space. I light the chalice with this blessing of gratitude, celebration, and support by Gwen Matthews. Today, we're thankful for what you bring to our fellowship, your spirit, talents, generosity, imagination, and dedication reaffirm our fellowship and create our beloved community. Our heartfelt thanks to you on this day and for all days to come. For those who embrace Thanksgiving as a day to honor the gifts of family, friendship, abundance, security, we celebrate with you and join our voices to hold aloft all sacred blessings. For those who hold Thanksgiving as a day of sadness, who mourn for the hurt and loss of Native peoples, who are lonely, who grieve the loss of those dear and beloved, we hold your heartache and sorrow so you do not have to carry the burden alone. Blessings be upon you. It's lit. As is our custom, let us remind ourselves of our commitment to beloved community by renewing together our aspiration. The slide will show the lyrics, the, <laughs> the words if you forgot. May love be the spirit of this fellowship. May the quest for truth be its sacrament and service be its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, 
and to help one another in fellowship. This is our aspiration. Now we'll hear a poem written by Lucera Love, read by Amy Day. Thank you. And I want to thank you, Lucera, for putting all of this care and love into the service today. I really am just a stand in for her today. So our thoughts and hearts go out to her and her family as they deal with this time. And so we embrace the, the gifts of her artistry today as she offers us um, this beautiful poem. And I just want to read um, from her author's note at the bottom here where she comments on the use of the word sin. The word for sin in Greek is hamartia and hata in Hebrew, which was also a word used in archery and means to miss the mark. When an archer missed the mark in a contest or in hunting, there were consequences for their failure, as there are consequences in our lives when we make mistakes. It is not helpful to wallow in guilt and to become paralyzed with shame. It is helpful and healing, however, to make reparations, make amends, apologize, and aim to do better. And now her poem, Thanksgiving Prayer written at the North Fork of the Yuba River, 2013, by Lucera Love. We give thanks on this day in a place that was never our own. Our ancestors, outcasts, expatriates, castaways, seeking a new home, claimed and named this generous expanse, America, turned a deaf ear to Turtle Island and to its Aboriginal names, Potawat, Wiat, Mikinak, Waju, Yubu, Semenak, Zipakna, Diné. With fearful hearts, they willfully and brutally erred, forced the cruel blight of a new worldview on the hearts and bodies of the first people. Today, let us humbly remember these grievous truths. Let us aim to do better, love without possessing, and lay care at the feet of this ailing land. Let us risk without delay an open heart and begin the work of correcting our mistakes. Let us give generously and stand again on the ground where we miss the mark, facing our sins, ready to be humbly instructed and to give our attention to those who have been hurt, sometimes doing nothing but deeply listening. I invite you to join me now as Annette plays for us and Scarlett puts on our screen the words to, um, Pardon me, to, if to be simple.
Rye Bread, a Native American Family Story by Kevin Noble Mylard, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. Rye bread is food. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar. Rye bread is shape. Hands mold the dough flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove. The fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet. The bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color. Golden brown, tan or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna or earth. Light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans and soup. Smell tacos, cheese, vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. I bet it's time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art. Sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread. Fry bread is history. The long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world with unknown food. We made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place. Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Oglala Sioux, Narangonset, Navajo, 
Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac, and Fox, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Dry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west, brown, yellow, black, and white, familiar and foreign, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here. Elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fry bread is you. Now we'll have our joys and sorrows with Amy Day. Pat. Thank you for letting us see the pages so much. That was lovely. <laughs> I know that's difficult to do on a Zoom call, <laughs> but that was great. Um, so before we, we go into this particular ritual, this part of our service where we just hold one another, really, um, this is just a really, uh, this is what part of how we enact and embody beloved community is by holding and uplifting whatever's on our hearts and happening inside of our lives right now. And we drop a stone into the water that holds us all to symbolize our connection to one another and the large presence that holds all of us. So you can go ahead and send those to me if you still have something that you would like to have a stone dropped into the bowl for. Um, I do want to mention just a brief announcement. So you, as you know, um, oh, hopefully as you know, um, the our building is temporarily closed as two of our three staff members have been sick this past week. And, um, and as our county has gone into the purple, um, the building is closed. However, we still find creative ways to be together. Um, so this coming Saturday, um, if it's not raining, we invite you to a grounds work party. Uh, we'll be renovating the bed by the nursery with a truckload of soil, transplanting, uh, also spreading mulch, um, and you will have Karen Underwood and Val Grzynski there, Grzynski, pardon me, um, there to kind of show us what needs to be happening if, you're, if, you're, if you'd like to help, but you'd need a little direction. So bring your gloves, your tools, bring your mask, your hand sanitizer, and we will do some safe um, and helpful things to, to make our, our build, building and grounds a little bit more beautiful and care for them this time. So thank you. So now I invite you just to shift gears ever so slightly as we move into this portion of our time where we just uplift whatever it is that's on your hearts and that's inside this community. So the first one from Chip Sharp, a thank you to Kate McLean and to Terry Uyeki for joining yesterday at noon. And I want to say a thank you to Chip because he has been so wonderfully tenacious in sending out a weekly email to see if people are interested in still showing up to hold the signs at 4th and V for Black Lives Matter and for Huff. And so if you'd like to know more, maybe drop Chip a little bit, um, a note in the chat here, or you can send something to me and I'll make sure he gets it. We have from um, Kate McLean, sending best wishes to Susie Eustace. Um, she hasn't been feeling well for a few weeks, so we hope that she is on the mend now. And I see that she is with us today. So Susie, yes, we hope that you are feeling better and hope that you know that you are loved and held inside this space. Um, we have also from Kate McLean, grateful that Scarlett is feeling better. Yes, that is a joy we all have and sending lots of love and support to Bridget as well. A stone of joy from Kim Tripp Smith. Happy thanks living. I just wanted to share that. I know you all can see that in the chat, but that seemed worth sharing. Thank you, Kim. From Scarlett Tripp Smith, celebrations to all who have helped drop off necessities to my home in the time of need. So grateful to kind and helpful hearts in our community. And Scarlett, we are grateful for you as well. Thank you for 
even from your your sick sick bed <laughs> facilitating the technical end of our service today we really appreciate you um Birdie Welty, thanks everybody for your concern and support with Kiri and my ordeal. My doggy is safe. Oh, I'm glad to know that. Thank you to everyone who has held Birdie and her doggy and their family in your hearts. Um, from Allison Bronkel, so many thanks to Debbie and Sean for finishing the Our Whole Lives Human Sexuality classes for the middle schoolers who are now high schoolers. And yes, thank you. It has been a lot of hurdles to make that come to completion. So thank you, for Debbie and Sean, so much for, for your love and care that you poured into that. And I don't see anything else coming to me in the chat. So we will just have one final stone in fact, the final thing that we would like to share today um, is another thing from Loose Love, who again, put together a lot of this service and I'm just truly standing in for her today. And so we have some words that she wanted to be shared um, inside this sacred space today. Um, so this is from Luce. Lucera Luce Love's dad died peacefully in his home on November 13th. This is the wisdom that wants to be shared in his death. Life is precious and short. Lay down pride and walls. Forgive. Tell the people you care about that you love them and how you appreciate them. Be happy. Tomorrow may be too late. Love is greater than any grievance. Love is greater than anything. And so Lucera, we hold you and your family in our hearts today. Thank you for sharing your words and your heart with us. And so as we exit this portion of our service, I wanna invite you just to join me in holding all of these joys, gratitudes, celebrations, and sorrows in this sacred space. Uplift them in your hearts right now and just let yourself and this community be held in the sacredness of silence. Thank you. Again, our offertory words this morning were curated and selected by Luz, but they were written by Paul R. Beadle. Once upon a time, most folks use the offering plate to fulfill their pledges of financial support. Nowadays, lots of folks click on their church websites or set up automatic transfers in their checking accounts. Some still write a monthly check, paying their church bill along with all the others. But passing the offering plate was never just a practical exercise. It has always been a ritual. Even if your pledge is paid up, it is worthwhile for you to bring even just a dollar to drop into the plate as a ritual reminder of that form of love we call generosity. Let it be a reminder that after meeting our obligations to ourselves and our households and our communities to which we belong and are committed, we must still keep our capacity to give. The practice of giving until it is second nature and first response helps bring forth the realm of love. The offering will now be given and gratefully received.
What a lovely medley, Annette. Thank you so much. I'm going to be sharing some thoughts from a book called Braiding Sweetgrass. It's by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Here's a little picture of her. I always like to see what the author looks like. You can see kind of there, she's holding a tree that's so appropriate. Elizabeth Gilbert has called this book a, a, love, a hymn of love to the world, and she's so right. Many people in the fellowship have read and appreciated this book, and so have I. Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. I'd like to begin with her care comparison of two creation stories. On one side of the people, on one side of the world, were people whose relationship with the living world was shaped by Sky Woman, who created a garden for the well being of all. On the other side was another woman with a garden and a tree. But for tasting its fruit, she was banished from the garden and the gates clanged shut behind her. That mother of men was made to wander in the wilderness and earn her bread by the sweat of her brow, not by filling her mouth with the sweet juicy fruits that bend the branches low. In order to eat, she was instructed to subdue the wilderness into which she was cast. Same species, same earth, different stories. Like creation stories everywhere, cosmologies are a source of identity and orientation to the world. They tell us who we are. We are inevitably shaped by them, no matter how distant they may be from our consciousness. One story leads to the generous embrace of the living world, the other to banishment. One woman is our ancestral gardener, a co-creator of the good green world that would be the home of her descendants. The other was an exile, just passing through an alien world on a rough road to her real home in heaven. And then they meet, the offspring of Sky Women and the children of Eve, and the land around us bears the scars of that meeting the echoes of our stories. Look at the legacy of poor Eve's exile from e Eden. The land shows the bruises of an abusive relationship. It's not just the land that is broken, but more importantly, our relationship to land. They say hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And I can imagine the conversation between Eve and Sky Woman. Sister, you got the short end of the stick. Kimmerer says the uncertain path to the future could be illuminated by language. In Potawatomi, we speak of the land as emingoyak, that which has been given to us. In English, we speak of the land as natural resources or ecosystem services, as if the other as if the lives of other beings were our property. We are all bound by a covenant of reciprocity, plant breath for animal breath, winter and summer, predator and prey, grass and fire, night and day, living and dying. Water knows this, clouds know this, Soil and rocks know they are dancing in a continuous giveaway of making, unmaking, and making again the earth. The moral covenant of reciprocity calls us to honor our responsibilities for all we have been given, for all that we have taken. It's our turn now, long overdue. Gifts of mind, heart, hands, voice and vision, all offered up on behalf of the earth. Whatever our gift, we are called to give it and dance for renewal of the word world in return for the privilege 
of breath. Amy's going to tell us about our breakout groups now. We're going to discuss some questions. So one of the, the beauties, beautiful aspects of this particular form of gathering, gathering, uh, is that we do get to kind of break out into these tiny little virtual rooms um, and have more intimate discussions. And one of the ways that we are continuing to build the beloved community and continue to add to the wisdom and richness that we all get to um, enjoy in is by opening up this discussion, right? Part of what we're looking at today is this idea of kind of deconstructing the old white supremacist narrative, right? And as we look into um, part of that is, is building a, um, not a top-down model of wisdom, but that everyone has wisdom to offer. And so what we're going to do today is to break it into four separate rooms to look at these four separate questions. So if you are invited into room one, we invite you to sit with the question, what is gratitude? Particularly as it relates to gratitude to the earth, gratitude to the indigenous people, right? Whose, whose land we, our ancestors claimed for their own. In room two, we will look at the question of what is reciprocity? In room three, we will unpack a little bit about what promotes gratitude and open-heartedness for you. And finally in room four, what keeps you from an open heart and and so we invite you to choose someone who can be the designated spokesperson and to really unpack these well enjoy this time we'll have about 10 minutes to really get into this and share your thoughts share your experiences and we will all come back together after those 10 minutes you'll be invited back in to share what wisdom you've excavated from your group so Scarlett will, will invite us into our separate rooms in just a moment. And thank you for your contribution, for your wisdom. We'll see. indigenous people. So who was the spokesperson for group one? Sylvia Shaw is our spokesperson. She graciously volunteered. <laughs> Why can't I find her? I'm looking, I know I'm looking for Sylvia on my screen. <laughs> There she is. All right. <laughs> and oh, thank Sylvia. My, I'm sorry. I accidentally. There we go. Are you unmuted? Lovely. Okay. Keywords that came up during our discussion: gratitude, appreciation, gift unearned, action, prayer, reciprocity, way of looking at the world, stopping to notice the world. That's just a few, I'm sure, but that's where we ended up. All righty, thank you, Sylvia. Um, and I want to invite you, um, if anyone has anything to add to these, please, you're welcome to add them to the chat to everyone, just because I know that it can be really rich to just continue this flow of conversation. So thank you, group one. And thank you, Sylvia, for sharing your thoughts on, on gratitude. Those are some lovely, lovely, lovely words there. So I was part of group two and our spokesperson um, was Montana. 
who is who's uh, who's going by the um, pseudonym Jack today, Scarlett, if you're looking for him. <laughs> there we go. Okay, um, we had a nice discussion and um, is it okay if I mention people by name? Or yeah, maybe ahead. not, I'll just do, yeah. okay. I'll, I'll just mention the thoughts that came up in, in order. Um, if anyone has um, things to share about any of these things, I can let you know who said what, but for what it's worth. Um, someone mentioned that giving and taking upon their husband's death um, became more apparent and they were able to accept help from others uh, and the gifts more from others after that experience. Um, and about blessings in all directions. So there was a lot of discussion how this uh, concept of giving and taking the like yin and yang, they have to both be up there at the same time or one has to be with the other, black and white type thing. That's what I got out of it. Um, someone with Scottish an ancestry mentioned about um, the importance of keeping your word, paying it forward, and then trust in yourself. And um, there was a term that came up that I wasn't familiar with, but um, we'll look into a little bit more called solidarity economy and um, being part of the same collective. And then also um, there was a common theme about times in our lives that we cycle in and out of giving and taking. So it's not always a balance. It seems like you're um, either more leaning towards one or the other at the same time. And I'm just gonna to go totally off script right now. And I have to mention this um, email that we received exactly a year ago from Kate McLean. And I wanna um, take my hat off to the worship committee because she wrote us a, a letter a year ago about putting together a service just along these lines that we're talking about today. And when I saw the description on the website, it reminded me that this was uh, something that came up a year ago and around Thanksgiving. And it's just great that our fellowship can address these things that members bring up and brought to the worship associates attention. And then they were actually, uh, whether they knew it or not, um, coming together with a great service around the theme. So thanks to Kate and thanks to the worship associates for um, listening to her request. And that's it for group two. Thank you. Thanks, Montana. And thank you everyone who contributed to that. Um, the third question we had was what promotes gratitude and open heartedness for you? So I, I kind of got chosen to be my own group's talker, but that's okay. Um, we had some really lovely discussion talking about what brings us gratitude and open-heartedness and a lot of people said that it's the little things that a lot of the time like that's kind of what we first started getting going on was like rain sunshine people's smiles you know different you know nature and you know seeing people seeing our friends and family on Thanksgiving and having a Thanksgiving with our computer basically because that's that's what a lot of us did um and it was, it was a really nice, beautiful discussion and just talking about how sometimes we feel guilty if we're not, if we don't have gratitude, but in fact, it's like, it's okay to not feel gratitude sometimes and to just like let yourself melt because that's how we build ourselves back together again is, you know, you have to fall apart in order to come back together. So it was a really lovely discussion and I know we all got a lot out of it, so. And I'm going to pass it off to, I think, Sandy Lynn for number four. Okay. Uh, 
So wait, I want to change back to gallery view so I can see everybody. Um, we had the what keeps you from gratitude and open heartedness. And this was not a difficult one <laughs> to answer. Um, so much of it was, uh, it started off with, well, in the last six years, the political right, their, the grievances that, that we've had with each other and politically and, and how difficult that's been, but also um, the feeling of so many things are going on with us personally um uh income wise um not being able to see our loved ones in person covid um and all the little details in our lives that have changed so drastically and that really makes it hard to kind of go think outside of just what your day-to-day personal difficulties are and the anxiety that is just um, permeating everything. Um, oh, it was pointed out that gratitude and open heartedness is usually um, between communicated between two people or more, and 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 so since we can't do that as much now, um, it's important to remember how to give that to yourself the gratitude and open heartedness to yourself first. And, um, and, and it, and the, the way that we can get into this spiraling anxiety feeling, it's important to just help yourself stop. Just remember, I was reminded um, us to stop. And um, the last one, and this was so hard because the meeting ended in mid sentence of this one. <laughs> and I, I feel like we could have had easily an hour more <laughs> on this subject. But anyway, um, uh, it was, it, it was, um, Bob that was saying that he feels a pressure to feel to to seem manly and especially in the job that he does of um and of his uh as a handyman and and he he has a he feels a pressure to feel to seem that way and that if he's looking soft or uh, you know, kind-hearted or generous or, or um, feeling gratitude or expressing that—that that it seems to go against what he he feels pressure the society pressures him for, and so that. But it was in the middle of that sentence he got that much in, but um, or not even that. But I extrapolated, and then I in my notes added, well, even for women, it's um, for anyone that there's a pressure to feel to seem stoic and um and so it's it it makes you vulnerable and puts you in a vulnerable space to show gratitude and open heartedness and that was all we had time for <laughs> thank you sandy so i want to just so we didn't <laughs> have a very um, polished ending for our time together, this portion of our time here together. So I want to just pass, the, pass it back, so to speak, to Pat and just see if there was anything else that you wanted to kind of bookend this conversation with. Um, I, I know it's been said in the chat, but I just think it's, this is also one of my favorite things that we do, we, you know, before we were on Zoom, even in person, it's just the richness of um, diverse views, backgrounds, and, and just wisdom, because this is really, really a, of people that think deeply about this stuff and, and care deeply, and it shows in, the, um, in what you all bring to the conversation. So Pat, did you have anything else that you wanted to share as we kind of wrap up this discussion here? I think you did a great job of it, Amy. I was really impressed with the caliber of conversation in our group. And then from the responses of the others, they're thoughtful, they make me think, they make me grateful. 
that I'm part of this community and it makes me feel reciprocal. <laughs> Thank you. I do just want to mention, I got something um, in the chat from Greg and Debbie about wanting to share a brief exercise. So maybe that would be a lovely way for us to transition out of this before we have our close. Sounds great. Weekend. So if Scarlett, if you could find them, there we go. Oh, still muted. Thank you. So years ago, Greg and I were in a couples group, and I'm sure everyone's done a variation on the exercise of taking five minutes with another person and listening to them. You don't say anything for five minutes. The other person just talks for five minutes, and then you switch. And um, what we did in this couples group was the same thing, except we spend five minutes telling each other what the things, be they small or large, about each other that we appreciate. And the other person just has to hear it. I know Scarlett was saying earlier how hard it is to receive, and that is kind of the hard part. I mean, I would say anything from thank you for making coffee in the morning to thank you for, you know, giving me this wonderful gift or whatever. And it's just, a, it really made me, it's like Kate was saying in the chat room, it's a way to exercise that muscle of gratitude. So I think everyone should give it a try. It's really worth it. Thank you so much for that. I, I'm, I'm taking notes right now, Debbie, because that's something I want to <laughs> practice in my own life. I think that would elevate the energy in my home immensely. And maybe we could find a, a virtual way to do that um, maybe during the week for, for some of our members that, that are home alone right now, because I think it's a, it is a beautiful, beautiful exercise. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So... <laughs> We are going to close out this time um, in our service and move into, um, I invite you to sing along in your own home with us as a net place for us. Uh, oh, we give thanks. And Scarlett will put the words up for us. So thank you, everyone. Our closing words as we extinguish the chalice are from a prayer poem titled In the Spawning Ground by Brian D. Tripp, a Karuk artist, poet, traditional singer, and indigenous people's rights activist. The poem can be found in the book Kam Tem, A Journey Toward Healing, compiled by Kishan Lura Cooper and Walter J. Lara Sr. 
And I'm grateful for David Marshak for telling us about that book and to Lucera for finding this prayer poem in it. I am from the spawning ground. It's the one we all know at one time or another. We all swam from the same hole. That's when my water broke. That's when my father spoke. He said, when I was young, I was told, know how the water tastes, know which way it flows, feel like the wind, know which way it blows, learn from the animals, the birds and the bees, say a prayer for the home ground, the river, the rocks, the mountains, the ocean and trees. Always give more than you take, Always work hard for the people's sake. Don't tell lies, do things right. Sing your own song and you won't go wrong. So what I know is what I owe. Take it, use it, then put it back before it we're in the ground where it was found, before it was found. Then give it water and let it flow. Give it light, make it bright, let it glow with love, with respect. That way, that day, we all can grow. Yo toi, yo toi, yo toi. It is extinguished. Now, Let's reach out our arms our, to touch our virtual friends while we sing our closing song. On the edge of the screen, you can touch with someone else. And Annette will play for us our closing song. Stay for the virtual coffee hour. Shalom, salam alaikum, blessed be, ashe, aho. Remember, stay home, stay safe, stay connected. And stay for the virtual coffee hour. You all now have the power to unmute yourself.